Well, you've really caught me in my element here uh, today. We're out on a small section of salt marsh at the north end of the reserve. We tried to get onto the Dumbles just a moment ago, but too many cranes, seven cranes, including a couple of youngsters down there just now. So we found a little bit of the salt marsh because I wanted to tell you just a little bit about how important this habitat is. The special kind of salt marsh found here at Slimbridge is really important. It's the reason that the birds come to this area. If you think about the whole of uh, England back in the early days, before there were too many people around, there would have been bogs and fens and marshes and reed beds. There would have been high forest over most of the land, but very few areas where there was short grassy, naturally occurring short grassy vegetation like this. And this is one of those areas. This is a rare habitat known as Atlantic salt pasture. And it's restricted to just a few areas on the western seaboard of Europe where we have these fantastically high tidal ranges. That's what generates this grassy kind of salt marsh. Prehistorically, this was the chosen feeding area of the big herbivores of the day, the wild oryx, a massive wild cow whose footprints can still be found in some of the layers of silt here. This was their preferred feeding area, along with things like red deer as well. When our ancestors came along, they really liked this habitat as well. First of all, they were hunting those, uh, those auroch. They were hunted to extinction. But when we became farmers, we also really valued this land. You could turn your cattle out onto these pastures and they would fatten up really nicely. And those ancestors went to the extraordinary effort of building sea walls. And we have a whole series of sea walls here at Slimbridge, four different lines of defences claiming this valuable grazing habitat from the bulk of the flooding from the estuary. And the very earliest reclamations here go right back to 1100, 1400, 1600. And the current line of the sea wall is between 1800 and 1840. Well, let, let's get down to some of the specifics of the, the plants here. I've tried to plonk myself in a good representative area, good selection of, of species here. Um, first of all, let's start with this one. This is Townsend cordgrass, and this is the colonizer. This is the, the plant that can grow a full vertical meter further down the tidal range than any other species here. So it, it colonizes and it helps to trap the silt that allows these other plants to then come in and get established. Beautiful um, sea aster here uh, as well. Lovely succulent leaf on that. Very tasty. The cows like to eat that one. As is this one, I couldn't find one close to, but we've got some sea plantain here as well same thing lovely succulent plant like the sea aster but one of my favorites is actually this one this is one called sea arrow grass and it looks tasty it is tasty the animals love to graze this i've seen deer selectively grazing just on this particular plant and if you've been on any of the salt marsh walks with me this is one that i'll make you eat it actually has a lovely taste of coriander Probably most importantly, we're looking at this very humble little grass here. This is common salt marsh grass, and it's really the most important species. This is what the white-fronted geese, the widgeon, the Buick swans, this is what they would have come to Slimbridge for. This is their favorite uh, grazing. And one rather odd one uh, is this species here. It's always a very difficult part of my job to try and get people enthusiastic about the commonest grass in the world. This is perennial ryegrass. It's the basis of most of our pastoral systems all around the world now. But if you think about what this plant needs, it needs high fertility, but it mustn't be shaded out by other coarser grasses. So where this species occurred in the wild would have been in a very few special niches. And this is one of those niches, the top edge of the salt marsh here, perennial ryegrass, which is not only good for cattle and sheep, it's also another very good grass for the geese.
The best place by far to observe the salt marsh is from the estuary tower. We've got a huge expanse of it there, several hundred meters wide. This is just a narrow band here. Uh, and that's where you're going to see a lot of the birds that are taking uh, advantage of this. So be proud of this really special habitat that we have here at Snowbird.